Hi there. In this video, we're going to talk about DNS. What is it? Why do we need it? And how does it work? So when I open my browsers and I try to access a website such as github.com, what I'm doing is I'm asking my machine, my browser, to communicate with the server, the web server hosting the GitHub resources and asking for them. So if I open the developer console and I go to the network tab, I can see that I am fetching some resources, some HTML, some CSS, some JavaScript and I'm not communicating with the domain name, but rather with an IP address, because that's how machines communicate through the internet, through any network. You need IP addresses. And so if we can, if we look here, we can see this remote address uh, column, and that's the IP address of a GitHub web server. So what I'm doing, I'm sending an HTTP, actually a TCP request from my machine to the GitHub web server on this IP. And I only entered github.com into my browser, but I, communicating with this IP. The mapping, the translation, the resolution from the domain name github.com to, to the IP address is done through DNS. And so uh, we humans, when we interact with the computer, we prefer to use domain names. So if I am a company and I'm advertising my services or my website, I'm not going to say connect to IP address 123749. I'm rather going to say connect to my website and give a, uh, a user-friendly, human-friendly domain name. So that's what DNS does. It translates the IP address, the domain name, to an IP address. And we can do that differently. We can do that, uh, look at that through the terminal. So if I pull up my terminal and I do exactly the same thing, try to send an HTTP request to github.com, and I add the hyphen V flag to make it uh, more verbose, stop it and look at just what happened first so we try to communicate with github.com on port 443 that's https and the host name was the domain name was resolve and that's the ip address we were actually communicating with so the curl program before attempting to send a http request needed the ip address of github.com it sent uh, it called a function uh, a resolver that translate that did that re uh, translation for it and this is implemented at the operating system level. So for instance, in this Linux box, there is a function called uh, get uh, address info, get addr info that you, and you give it a domain name and you some, some, some arguments and it spits out the uh, IP address. Under the hood, it uh, uses DNS and actually sends a DNS query to a DNS server that has this information. So we have uh, these DNS servers that have the mappings between a domain name and an IP. And uh, it's not just regular PV4, we can also have IPv6, we can have also other type of DNS, other types of DNS records such as uh, MX, mail exchanger. So if I want to send an email to github.com, I'm interested in the server that's responsible for email and that different one than the one, we, than the one used for web, for the web. And so I send a DNS record of type MX to get the to, to 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 signal my intent of sending email, and then I get the IP address of the GitHub mail server. And we can take a look at the actual DNS queries because I was running TCP dump and I uh, caught the DNS uh, query sent from my machine to the Google DNS server, which is eight 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 eight, and its response. Let's pull up Wireshark. So I have Wireshark here, and we can see that uh, from my local IP, my source, I sent a DNS query to 888, that's the Google uh, name server. And uh, it's a simple DNS query. It has a transaction ID that identifies the query, some flags to specify options, and it had one question. My question was for the Google server, what is the record of type A for github.com? Type A is IPv4. Uh, AAAA is IPv6, you have MX for email, and so on. And so that was my question. And the Google domain name, ser uh, name server provided an answer. So it said, for your query whose transaction ID is this, so it needs to be the same transaction ID so we can map the query with the response. Your query was this, and here is my answer. Uh, for the name github.com, the record of type A, meaning the IPv4 address, is this. And this is exactly what we saw in the curl command. So in the example we just saw, we sent a single request to the Google name server and got a response. That's what we call a recursive uh, name server, meaning it does everything for us and fetches that information 
and provide the response. And since github.com is a popular domain, it probably had that information in its cache. But if it didn't, it would have needed to go look for it. And the way you actually locate the information is you go through this hierarchy. So DNS, domain name system, is a hierarchical database, basically. So you start at the root, and these are uh, root name servers. They are actually the same uh, for the whole internet. They are managed by this organization, and you can go to their website and see the list of the root name servers. So any uh, DNS server that needs to uh, resolve a domain name needs to start here. And then after the root server, after the root level, we got a top level domains. And these are your .com, .net, .edu, or even country specific ones. And so, uh, for instance, if I want to access uh, mailexample.com, I need to first go to the root, then ask it for the .com name servers. Uh, once it gives me this information, I will uh, send a request to the .com name servers and ask about example, then send a request to example.com about mailexample.com, and finally get my response. And within that subdomain, uh, we can even delegate to other name servers and they will be managed within their own zone. So we call that a zone when you have a uh, subdomain and what's below it being managed by a single name server, you delegated the authority to that uh, zone. So when you think about it, DNS is a global database. And when you want to look up a domain name, you run a query against that database. The key of that query is the domain name. And you can filter based on record type. And what happens under the hood is you're going to have some requests. You're going to look at different name servers. But at its core, it's just a database that, have a map, that has a mapping for all domain names and their IP addresses and also their mail servers and other information. So I have in front of me here a simple Go program that uh, actually builds a DNS query from scratch, uh, basically a sequence of bytes that send a UDP request, UDP packet to the 8.8.8 uh, name server. That's the Google one we just saw. And it takes uh, an argument. That's the domain name we want to query. And then we build a DNS query and we encode the domain according to the DNS specification and we specify a transaction ID and uh, various flags. And then we send that request, so simply a UDP regular packet. We get a response and we parse it. And we can take a look at an example. So if I run it, I actually get the IP address. And that's pretty cool. Like with just a few lines of code and following the format, we can uh, specify a name server and just get our response.